We'll stop at nothing to drive you happy. We'll drive you happy at Carvana. You might recognize these commercials for Carvana, the online car dealer that delivers cars to your home or sends them to one of their vending machines spread across the country. The company says it wants to change the way we buy cars. And in 2021, investors took notice. Its revenue had more than doubled from the previous year, and its stock value skyrocketed by over 1,000% from a low point in 2020. I think Carvana is a perfect example of a stock that had everything go right for it during the first part of the pandemic and subsequently seems to have almost everything going wrong. The company's share price started to fall in late 2021, plummeting by 95% over several months. And the things that had once driven Carvana's growth were now signaling trouble to investors. So what went wrong? Carvana has never actually posted an annual profit, instead focusing on growth. Carvana put money into hiring, into new reconditioning centers to fix up the cars that they buy and sell them again. Carvana's put a lot of money into marketing, including the big Super Bowl ads and things like that. Did I tell you I bought our car from Carvana? But also the car vending machines. They spend a lot of money and they have always spent a lot of money and they don't make a lot of money. The company grew steadily and went public in 2017. But it was in 2020, amid the pandemic, when the share price really took off. In February 2021, CEO Ernie Garcia talked to CNBC about Carvana's growth. I think what COVID did is it shifted psychology faster in the direction of trying new things. And so I do think that the business probably has more demand today than it would have had pre uh, absent COVID. As demand increased, three main things were helping fuel growth for the company. One was its method for accounting for car loans. Like other auto dealers, Carvana offers customers loans to buy their cars and sells the debt to investors who buy bonds with a claim on customer loan payments. This is a process called securitization. But unlike others, Carvana offloads its loans from its balance sheet to make a gain up front rather than making a gain over time. Low interest rates at the time helped make the loans appealing to those investors who had a higher risk appetite and were more comfortable with consumer credit. In 2021, Carvana made 37% of the company's gross profit from gains on loan sales. The second thing fueling growth was the rising cost of used cars. A global chip shortage restricted production of new cars, sending up the cost of used ones. This benefited dealers across the market. And the third was its online low contact model, which allowed cars to be bought and sold across states. The process that Carvana promises is appealing to a lot of people. You don't have any salespeople. You know what your price is. You know that you have financing going in. Like, it's kind of like a one-click, you know, you can buy a car from your living room. Carvana's platform was ideal for a social distancing world, and its stock followed the trend of other virtually focused companies. They were, you know, really thriving during the pandemic. Stock was on a steady upward trajectory, uh, and then the wind changed direction. After the peak in August, share value started to slip. Spikes in COVID cases, supply chain issues, and rising inflation began to spook investors. I think it started with kind of a broader growth stock pullback. They were like other companies that struggled with the pandemic high expectations like Peloton and Netflix. In February, the company announced that it would acquire used car auction business Adessa US for $2.2 billion to expand their physical locations for inspecting and reconditioning cars. But in April, the company announced their first ever decline in quarterly sales, and share value dropped. With Carvana, you know, they had this growing demand, they raced to meet this demand, they grew, they grew, they grew, and then all of a sudden, you know, the tide kind of turns, demand isn't there for whatever reason, or isn't there to the level that they expected, and now investors are looking, you know, kind of at the nitty gritty of the business, because it seems like growth isn't gonna be the story. The tailwinds that had contributed to Carvana's growth and boost in stock were now becoming headwinds. Demand was cooling for their securitizations. Fears grew that rising inflation and a potential recession would make it harder for car buyers to pay back their loans. Investors' appetite for growth stocks and consumer credit declined. Used car prices were also becoming too high for many buyers. Carvana said the average price for their cars increased by more than 30% from January 2021 to January 2022. And Carvana was dealing with logistical problems associated with the growth in demand. Complaints about the company were growing. 
So Carvana customers started reporting having issues with um, getting the titles to their cars, getting the paperwork in time, being provided with temporary license plates from states that they didn't live in. And those stories became more and more common uh, in the second half of last year. In November, Carvana said it was addressing significant operational constraints due to its record growth and labor shortages due to COVID. However, many of these issues carried over into 2022. By May, Carvana's share price hovered near a low point. The company announced that it would lay off roughly 12% of its workers after borrowing heavily to acquire Edessa. In July, Illinois moved to suspend Carvana in the state after complaints about titles and registration. The state previously set strict guidelines for the company around issuing temporary registration and license plates. Carvana was granted a temporary restraining order to continue selling cars in the state at the end of July. Of the suspension, a Carvana spokesperson said, we provide title and registration services at a rate among the top performing dealers in the state. Carvana shares the state's commitment to reducing paperwork challenges as much as possible. So where does Carvana go from here? Quarter two earnings in August showed an improvement in retail unit sales. The company said it is focusing on cutting costs and improving efficiency. It also said it expects in the third quarter to sell its loans to financial institutions instead of packaging them into securities. Its share price increased by more than 40% the morning following the announcement. Carvana's path ahead may depend on how it continues to handle growth moving forward. When companies focus so exclusively on growth, they can you know, generate all sorts of demand for their product that they then maybe struggle to meet that demand. And then by the time they catch up, you know, the macro environment and the demand for their product for whatever reason, whether it's used car prices or supply chain issues or whatever, all these kind of weird issues that affected Carvana's business, they were overbuilt for, for what showed up. A Carvana spokesperson said that the company remains firmly committed to continuous improvement and will stay hard at work making the best car buying and selling experience available even better. Here's CEO Ernie Garcia in a quarter two call to shareholders. You're reducing the speed at which we're growing today given the shift in focus, uh, but our hope and belief is that by getting more efficient, it makes it easier to grow faster in the future because you have kind of less work to do per sale. And so, you know, we'll hope to get that back um, over time at some point. The auto industry as a whole has been impacted by changing market conditions, but the share price for some competitors, like CarMax, have not been as severely affected as Carvana. 